If you recall, we spoke to him a few weeks ago where he also uh, told us how in need he was uh, in terms of getting back home. It's been weeks and here he is still in the Netherlands. Good morning, Reverend. Yeah, good morning. I hope you're well. Well, by God's grace. So since the last time we spoke, has there been any improvement in terms of how you can get back home? Not at all. Nothing so far? Not you mentioned that you had filled some forms earlier and we were hoping that maybe by now they would have gotten back to you. Any feedback? I had a feedback about, uh, I think, three weeks ago, and very brief. And they said they've received my message and they will get in touch with me as soon as they hear something from my crowd. That was it. Nothing at all. Okay. Now, Most recently also, the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Madam Shelley Ayokobochi, mentioned that they were working towards uh, helping some about 3,000 Ghanaians stranded abroad to get back home. Are you aware of this? And has there been any process that started? Yeah, I've been monitoring it on the Ghana web, and I had a similar information now. I read from the Ghana web. But with the embassy here in the Den Hague, Netherlands, no information at all, no official information. You tried calling them and they didn't pick up? My sister, the lines are not working. So I sent them an email um, about, I think, last week, telling mm. them that the lines on advertised on the websites are not working. So mm -hmm. I, I just tried to draw the attention to the fact that if they are not aware, then I'm trying to remind them so they can activate the lines. So those of us stranded here can have a means of communicating with them. Yeah. And I had a brief information that their providers are working on their lines. Mm -hmm. And that as soon as the problem is resolved, they will let us know. Meanwhile, they've advertised a different line on the website. So I tried that line and it went through. Then I spoke to one lady who said they have not had any information. And as soon as they have any information, they will get back to me. Since then, I've not heard anything. How long ago was this? That was last Wednesday. Until now, nothing? No show. Okay, let's just say that, okay, they returned to you with some information. Now, they're asking for most Ghanaians who are stranded abroad to pay for their, um, you know, tickets. They're likely to even pay for, you know, mandatory quarantine as well. Are you in that position yeah. to do that? Well, we have heard about that. And with the ticket issue, we don't have much problem, you see. Mm. Um, I remember the first time I spoke with them, they asked me to do a um, COVID-19 test on my own. And yeah. then I asked the lady if that is possible, because um, we know these programs are being taken over by government. Mm -hmm. But there's a construction from Accra. Well, by the grace of God, I managed to get the COVID-19 test done on my own. I have to pay 100 and 19 euros for it okay yes um by the grace of god it's out and with the tickets by the grace of god um even if i don't have it here my wife can buy send money from ghana mm. and then pay. so i don't have a problem with that what about mandatory and, quarantine yes we had issue with the mandate that is where i have a problem with okay tell us why i have a problem with the mandatory quarantine because one all over the world mandatory quarantine is been catered for by government and not individuals and then secondly and if that is to be done at all i mean spending as whooping sum of seven nine to seven thousand cities 14 days on a hotel of the government choice i mm -hmm. think that is not right i mean the reason i'm saying that is you know the issue of the pandemic has taken a toll on everybody mm -hmm. government individuals and we are all suffering so if we are stranded and the government is expecting us to raise this money from this place, mm -hmm. your point of departure, pay into the account of the hotel in Ghana mm -hmm. before you are evacuated, that is indirect way of telling you that we are not letting you in. Mm -hmm. I didn't come to work. I came for ministry program. And even by the time we get here, because of the pandemic, most of the ministry's programs were canceled. Yeah. Churches were suspended. Mm -hmm. So the best you can do is to go back home. The ministry kept me in a hotel for some time. When the bill started skyrocketing, they have to arrange to put you in the house of a member, hoping you will get back home. And then you are here, and then you are told, raise money to pay hotel bill, where you'll be quarantined yeah. before you are released to your home. I mean, come on. So, so you would have preferred that government takes up that cost? Is that what you're saying? Or would you have wanted to pay partially? Come again. 
Would you have preferred that government absorbs the entire cost for mandatory quarantine, or do you suggest that you pay part and government also pays part? Well, I, I, I prefer the government absorbs that. And even okay. if they are not able to absorb, can we look at other options? Other okay. options as in, um, I heard the Pentecost Convention Center has been given to government as a, real, a, a place for COVID-19 patients. I don't know how true that is. Yeah, that's Previously, more like an isolation okay. and treatment. That's for isolation and treatment? That's for isolation and treatment. Uh -huh. And also, I mean, we can be put there. That not um, uh, That is not the only issue. And uh, when you look at our universities, I mean, now I heard from the president's speech yesterday that schools are going back. Yes, final year students are actually in school from today. So universities are out of the question, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And even so secondary then, schools as well. Yes. Now, so I think alternate means should be looked at. But, I mean, putting all the cost of the quarantine on us, that is, I can say it's not fair. All right. Because people are giving to support the COVID-19 pandemic issue. When you go to America, I mean, people are giving. Companies okay. are giving. I mean, the public is giving to support. So this is a time we see the importance of governance. Government can also do something to support the citizen with those of us stranded. But if we are stranded and we are being expected to raise the money to pay right. for our own mandatory quarantine back home, then it's like you are making already bad problem worse for us. And All indirectly right. telling us that we are not welcome back home. No that problem. All right, Reverend, thank you so much for speaking to us. And we hope that we can relay this information to the authorities. Let's hope that something can be done. But stay strong.